Hello everyone, Mike Greppel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. I've recently done some tutorials on pulling data from a data range using index and match, and we'll take a quick review of those. But recently I received a request on adding a third criteria to make this a little more complicated. So let's see how we can pull data from Excel with multiple types of criteria. So here's the first basic scenario. I have January through December and 10 different products. And I've created data validation drop-down boxes here for the product and for the month. And by selecting each one of these, we were able to use index and match here to pull in the data from that intersection. So if I change this to product three and maybe to the month of May, you'll see May for product 3, 1910, 1910, and that matches. So here's the formula to do that. It's a basic index and match scenario. Then we added another component to that where if you wanted, for example, the sum of all of product 3 or all of a specific month, you can use these formulas. It's an index and match with the sum function and basically what we've done here is we've eliminated either the row information or the column information from the index function and thereby pulling in all the values from that month or from that column. So here for the month of May, as we've chosen here, it's looking at that range and just pulling in the values from that month. So looking at this, you can see it's 13,265, and that's what the month total here is. Or if I want a product total, again, for product three, if I highlighted that, you'll see the value is 14,671, 14,671. And again, I'll put a link to these previous tutorials down below so you have that information. But someone threw a little bit of a curve to that saying, what if I add a column here and I code certain groups of products in some fashion? You can see I have code one for the first three, code two for the next two, code three is only for one, four and five, etc. And what I want to do is say I want to get the sum of the period from say January through June, but just for the group code one or the group code four, etc. So what I've done is set up another little area here where I can pull in the code, one, two, three, four, and five. I have a beginning month, an ending month, and then what those sales are going to be. And I've used the sum function, but primarily to create the area of range, we're using the offset function. And we'll take a minute to go through that. So for example, let's say I want to know the group of code three from March through August, I get 7509. So if we take a look at group three, which is just one row, and I go March through August, I highlight that, it gives me 7509, that's a perfect match. If I change that to group two for March through August, again two, that's two rows, March through August, 15,643, 15,643. So this is working perfectly. So let's see how this process works. The sum function is obvious. I just want to add up the values of a range that the offset function helps me define. So the offset function, which you see here, has five different arguments. There's a reference, a rows, columns, then the height and width. So what offset does is say, give me a reference point or a starting point to my analysis. Then how many rows down do you want to go to start? How many columns over do you want to go to start? And then from there, how many rows high and then how many columns wide? So basically we're using the offset function to define that area that we want to sum. So our reference is going to be our starting point A1. So if we look at our formula here, and let me pull this down so you can see the whole formula. If we look at our offset function, our reference, I'm just using A1 as our starting point. Our rows, where does the code start? So I want to go down 
so many rows till I find the first row that's in that code. So what we're going to do there is we're going to use the match function to find out how many rows down we're going to go. So if I look at the rows group, there's your match function. I'm looking at cell C21. C21 is my code. I'm looking in A2 to A11, which is the range of codes, and I want zero and exact match. So in this case, to go down from A1, I want to go down one, two, three, four rows to get to the first of O2. So if I resolve this by hitting F9, notice it gives me a four. So I go with my starting point. I go down four rows till I get to row two. Next, how many columns over do I want to go? Well, where does the month start? I'm going to use the match function for that. So if I go to columns, again, I'm going to look in C22, which in this case is the month of March. I'm going to look in from C1 to N1, which is the range of months. I want an exact match. But I want to add one because I have to count for the column B, which is the product column. So for March, if I start with A1, I want to go over 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I hit F9 there, again, it gives me a 4. So I've started at my reference point. I've gone down the proper number of rows and over the proper number of columns. Now I have to create that block to determine how many rows high and how many columns wide I want to add together. So the height is how many rows are in the range. I'm going to use the COUNTIF function to do that. So if I click on height here, I'm using the COUNTIF function from A2 to A11, which is the list of my codes, and I'm using C21 as my criteria. So that is code 2. So how many times does code 2 appear in this? I hit F9, and it tells me it's 2 high. So, so far, I've gone from A1 down four rows and over four columns, and I've defined it as two, two rows high. So how many columns wide am I going to make it? Well, in the width, what I've done here is I've subtracted the column number of the farthest month from the column number of the nearest month, so August minus March. So if we take a look at that, if I figure out my width here, I'm basically saying, give me the match for C23, which is August, and subtract the match for C22, which is March. So let's take a look at that. If I highlight that match function and hit F9, that gives me an eight. So going from or August, which is the eighth month, January through August, that tells me that's the eighth column of that range. The next one is C22, which is March. That's going to give me a three. So if I highlight that match function and hit F9, I get a three. So eight minus three is five. But I want to include both months of March and August, so I'm going to add one to that. So if I take 8 minus 3 plus 1 and I hit F9 for that, it's now telling me it's 6 columns wide. So using that offset function, I've determined that I want to highlight starting at A1, I want to go down 4 rows, I want to go over 4 columns, and then I want it to be 2 columns high, and I want it to be um, 6 columns wide. And that's the range that I want to add. So I'm just going to escape out of that. And if I highlight that range from March over to August for those two columns, I get 15,643. And notice that's what my formula gives me, 16, I'm sorry, 15,643. So this sum function, using the offset function to determine the range I want to add, is the best way to have three sets of criteria determine how to pull data out and add it up from your range. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. 
So have a great day and happy excelling.